What's up? It's your boy Carcino here, and let's talk about it. Now, a lot of you don't know about how the Oscars work. And this is the event of all events. If you're involved, of course, many of us will be like, you know what? We don't even care. But other people will be like, hey, we do care. <laughs> So we have a serious problem here and there about who cares and who don't when it comes to these situations. And what we mean by that is the general public don't normally care about the Oscars, or some do. But those who are in this business, you know, these award shows mean something to them, these performances. This is what they dreamed about. When they got into the business. Now. Throughout the years. Some of the top people who've been snubbed for films. Or had been. You know. Recognized. For their. Um, you know. Their work. It has always gone by as one of the greatest, or how you put this, most noticeable omissions in like the history of film and You know, the Wizard of Oz. Come on. That's it. The Wizard of Oz. 1939 is when that came out. We still talk about the Wizard of Oz. To this day, and that was 1939. We're probably going to approach a 100-year anniversary of that movie. And we'll still be talking about the Wizard of Oz. They're going to keep that thing around. Longer than anything you could ever think of. Toto been dead 16,000 times over. But he is never more vivid than he is in that movie. Those dogs started to sell off the show. People wanted a Toto. Julie Garland wasn't even nominated for an Oscar. Can you believe that? Many people assume she won it for The Wizard of Oz. Seriously. It would shock you to know. She did not get an Oscar. Didn't even get nominated. Forget that. Didn't even get nominated. Didn't even get nominated. Now, you would think it stopped there. Ingrid Bergman, I believe that's how you say her name, from Casablanca, she didn't even get nominated. That's 1943. One of the greatest films ever made, still to this day. Humphrey Bogart, everybody wanted to be him, <laughs> all the way around the board. All these movies that's been remade, he was just the Duke of Cool.
Then, the unforgettable Gene Kelly, who made the hit song Singing in the Rain, wasn't even nominated for Singing in the Rain in 1952. One of the biggest shots of all time. Gene Kelly didn't even get nominated. Oh, I know. You think it stops there, right? No. And 1959, the politics continue. And... Remember Marilyn Monroe? And some like it hot. Well, I tell you what, she wasn't even nominated. Now, she's probably the most famous blonde woman ever. A lot of people would be like, why is Marilyn Monroe, I just don't understand the phenomenon with Marilyn Monroe. A lot of people would say that. Because when you're not here anymore, they will find a way to make you a standard. She was eye candy, and they've been milking her ever since her mysterious death. Now, who else didn't get nominated? The Duke, John Wayne. He didn't get an Oscar nomination for the search. Now, John Wayne, everybody want to be a tough cowboy like John Wayne. Wasn't a big John Wayne fan, but. So when Public Enemy said, Mother, fuck him and John Wayne. I was like, yay. All right. Forget John. But anyway, John was very known for the searchers. And in 1956, he was not nominated for an Oscar. Maybe because John is just probably as bland as anything else. To me, one of the biggest omissions was Anthony Perkins. Anthony Perkins played in Psycho. You remember Psycho? <laughs> he looked psychotic. He was a great actor. Reprived the role down the road, but he was not even nominated in 1960. Then the famous movie, Harold and Maude, in 1971 with Ruth Gordon. You remember Ruth Gordon from Rosemary's Baby? Well, 
And what was that? 1971. She was in a classic role in her olden years. Harold Maud. And she wasn't even nominated. Unbelievable travesty. Now, the biggest, probably of all time, most noticeable that everybody would recognize right off the bat and cannot believe it and think he won. Oscars for this role. People all w would say, no, he won, didn't he? That's what he's most known for. Jack Nicholas in the night, night Nicholas, Nicholas' son in The Shining. Jack's more known for this performance than anything he's done. And he's great. But The Shining, he really put it together. And not only not only here's Johnny not only was he great in the role he didn't even get nominated for an Oscar that was the most disturbing part about it. So, when I think of people who deserved an Oscar and been working the hardest to obtain this uh, accomplishment. I think of people like them. I think of people who really should have won when they won. And I mean the thing is they they weren't even they weren't even nominated. Now Sidney Poitier has some issues due to um, and you know due to some racial issues. Sidney Poitier You know, those were probably the biggest, like I said, Jack will always be known as the biggest. But there are so many Oscar snubs. Now, probably the biggest one is the heat of the night. Sidney Poitier. Mm, they call me Mr. Tibbs. <laughs> Virgil Tibbs. The heat of the night. That didn't get it. Can you believe that? Sidney Poitier? In the heat of the night? Man, that's something.
That is something. Now, trying to think, what is another one? Um, Jeff Bridges for the character, the dude in the Big Lebowski. I definitely believe that one's there. There's some honorable mentions like Pam Greer and Jackie Brown. Um, Matson for. Reservoir Dogs and I don't even know if Matson really deserved it I would say Harvey Cartel and Steve Buscemi should have definitely been nominated Bill Murray for Groundhog's Day definitely should be on there <clears throat> it became a, a bigger hit once it was home but yeah then, of course, some people are going to say Leonardo DiCaprio for Titanic. But that's my list. It's your boy Carcino, I'm out.